you guess, you can guess, but uh, <laughs> what? So, okay, so we will start. Thank you everyone for coming. I'm Sébastien Hero, technical director at Octopus and uh, lead developer of Ceblog. We are really glad to be here today and to be able to share some technology that we've used for our clients at Octopus. So today the technology that we will speak about is uh, enterprise search engines or enterprise search system and especially the one uh, developed by Google, so JSA, Google Search Appliance. It is the same technology that you have on Google.com but it's, it's for internet, extranet, so for private content in IN companies. Hi everyone, uh, I'm uh, Oliver Norbert from Seblood 2, so uh, I'm a project leader and a developer. Um, so for uh, this session, the question is why? So why we need uh, such engines dedicated for enterprise? Because uh, in many enterprises, uh, more and more documents are uh, needed with uh, different types. And so uh, the company has to handle all these documents. Um, and uh, so uh, we have to find a solution to handle all these documents at the same place and from different sources. Okay, so what is uh, an enterprise search system? There is three main components that characterize it. The first one is content awareness. Of course, this system needs to get the content, get the data. There is two different methods. The content, the system itself can pull the content from external sources, like when Google will crawl a web page, or you can have your own system or mechanism to push data inside the enterprise search system. The second component is content processing and indexing. So the, the system will process all the data in order to recognize the different metadata and index the content for better performances later when we will need to trigger and query the content. And the third one is this one, the query processing and matching. So you can use either a native UI to access all the documents that you have indexed, or API calls. A few examples of enterprise search system. So there is two kinds of uh, systems, open source, like Apache, Solar, based on Lucene, or Elastic uh, Search, or other, a lot of proprietary systems, the one from Google, or HP, or IBM. Okay, so in our cases, and um, with the client projects where we worked on, why we choose GSA? Well, because uh, of um, its uh, expertise, and uh, also um, for the key features. Uh, so auto-completion, smart filtering, so we'll see uh, uh, what it involves after on the demo website and suggestions. And all comes in one box. And so this box can manage different uh, document types. And so uh, grabbing them as a result on the same page. Yeah, and the power of Google is to be able to manage hundreds, six or seven hundreds of file types. Okay, so this is one work that we've done for GE. So this is the advanced search page of the website. Uh, as you can see, there is a few results on the left, on the main part of the page. It's kind of some, uh, the UI will almost be the same as Google, but just because we've chosen it, you can customize any part of the, the results. And then there is different filters and dynamic navigation on the right side. So what is dynamic navigation? Okay, you have different filters, one for competitors, customers. Every time you will click or select one filter, 
will, of course, get back different results. And then uh, JSA will also give us back all the parameters that can bring some results if you select it in the second time. Basically, you are not able to, to arrive on the page where it says there is no result. You can also only see the filter where there is results. And we have the count, so it's not readable, but this is one well, name of the customer and then the count. If I click on this one, I will get 100 results, for example. There is also some kind of feature that we are not able to see here, but there is the um, suggestion or autocomplete. When you fill, it will autocomplete based on all previous search that everyone has made on the box. Okay, so just before we've seen a website to display results, we've built another website where we, in fact, uh, where the client can configure the source and where and uh, so uh, which source to grab and where to push it. So on the GSA box and on the previous website, the results came from this box. This means the client can say, okay, I've got a library of files, I've got a library of images, I've got a library of uh, blog posts. So I configure the source, I configure uh, some filters from this date to this date. And so once it's configured, it can also, uh, after configures a service, a cron job on the system. And so every five minutes, the system will grab the new post, will push them to GSA, and the results will be bring to uh, any website where uh, the, the system can uh, grab results for the GSA box. Okay, so we have prepared a live demo website, so a quick website to showcase the use of JSA. So it is based on Joomla and we will show you in live. Okay, so is it readable for everyone? Yeah. Okay, okay. So we have a basic website, so we called it JTV, J4 Jab. Um, basic home page with just search engine. What you're looking for, the type of data you want to retrieve. So just to explain, the data we want, we are going to uh, grab results are from TV shows, so we can we'll be able to grab shows episodes, seasons, or uh, people from TV shows, so from uh, any countries around the world, okay, so not just US. Uh, so we have the search type, just below we have some shortcuts we've prepared, okay, so you can directly access to the Game of Thrones show, uh, Dexter Morgan, so the, the person from uh, the, the, the TV show. We have a more generic list, uh, most popular shows and latest episodes, okay. Um, so maybe, Sebastian, you can look for some uh, data so no type selected okay so just simple string some results so we're on Joomla website but the content is not on the website okay so in the database no article okay everything is grabbed from a GSA box where uh, we've pushed data in it okay from uh, uh, we'll see after how it's uh, how it's done, okay? But we've pushed everything to the GSA box, and now we have results. By default, the sort is done by relevant, so you will search for the Game of Thrones terms, okay? So here it's bold, Game and Thrones, okay? So to uh, uh, highlight the the terms, okay, the results. Uh, so we have a list, okay, of results with the image when there is one. Okay, so you can see some results. So there, there are uh, seasons, shows, uh, episodes, uh, dy dynamic navigation on the right. As you can see, so we we'll click on season, uh, it's automatically refreshed, and you only have uh, season results. With for every result, we you have some uh, details about. So the, this season is for the show Game of Thrones. The the first the date of the first episode for the season, the number of episodes, season number, and a, a little description of the season. So you can filter by the type, 
filtered by the people because when we've pushed the data for every um, um, every season or every show in the details of uh, of a show we have pushed some person so okay we've we have result for game of thrones we search game of thrones but sophie turner is in, in the results because she's part of the of the tv show like all the all the persons Mm -hmm. Okay. We're looking for another TV show. Nikita. Not many results here. Why? Because Nikita, so is a TV show we've not pushed yet to the GSA box. Okay. So we have we don't have any show corresponding to the search. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to push. The data uh, related to uh, to the Nikita TV show. We have a form where we just, in fact, we have to name the data source and we have to select the XML file where all the data are uh, set in it. Okay. Clicking on the button, so it's pushing the XML feed to the GSA box. So it's an IP address. Okay, with a specific port. It's supposed. So we've pushed the XML file. We have a success message. We have to wait. Uh, so uh, you're looking into the console, or yeah, okay. We've switched to the GSA console, okay, where you can configure um, uh, the box. We were in the feeds, so we now have uh, all the feeds the history of the fields that have been pushed. So you see some are completed. So we've pushed um, this week some data. This morning we've pushed Lie to Me and we've just pushed Nikita. And you can see it's in progress. We have 85 documents. This means we have 85 records. So no matter the type, okay. While, uh, while it's still in progress, you won't see, uh, we won't see any results on, uh, on the website. So we have to wait. It's completed. But what we could do, yes, it's to uh, check for some um, for some other uh, searches. So we have the most popular. So here it's a um, it's a um, rating based on um, uh, how many uh, people have uh, watched the, the TV show. Uh, we have the best rated, okay, because we have data about the rating. So we can see so it starts from ten to to zero, okay, when it's not rated yet. Um, so we can filter by drama, and so these filters, they are so as explained, they are dynamic, and this means these filters have been created um, through the um, the GSA console, and so uh, because we're on a TV show, so we've set data about people, about rating, about length, about countries, but if your uh, content is um, uh, professional content, of course. So you may have some uh, documents. So you can say you can uh, create uh, filters for the author, for the uh, uh, type of document, for uh, maybe the permission of the document. In fact, the filters you have here really depend on the data you have. Okay. So check again. Still in progress. Yes, we have more records than uh, the other one. Uh, yeah, so we're going to describe the XML file we've pushed to the console. Let you explain how you do it. I do it? Yeah. yeah. So about the XML file, you will see all the metadata that we've used. So as you see on the website, there was some filters about the people, about the genre, the genre of the, the show, about the country, and so on. So we, we, treat the, we, we will see the same data here. You can have multiple values, separated with a comma, for example. So this is about the meta tag. So of course you can define all the meta that you need. 
to characterize your content. And then we have the body of the, the content itself. So it will be the text that will describe what is your content. And uh, Google will perform some relevance matching when you search for a query term inside this body and description. So on this one, we have a few uh, different records. The first one was about a show. This one is the type season. And of course, you can have different meta for each type of content that you want to push. We will try to see uh, if the content is indexed and if you are to search for Nikitana. Yeah, okay. Just to show you so what it's still indexing. We're in the uh, Joomla backend, okay? As you can see, no articles here. Uh, what we've done, so with our uh, extension, we've built um, a search, but instead of um, grabbing information from the Joomla articles, we, we have configured a specific call, a specific call, so through um, a web service. Um, which is going to call the GSA box. And so we've configured it with some, uh, we have some fields here. Um, we can, uh, to, so to filter the query. And so, as you can see, so we have some, uh, values, uh, which are based, uh, from the GSA console. Okay. We have the sort, we have the start. So from which, uh, limit you, you want to, uh, to start your, the results, the number of results you want. The queue is for the, the query string we have on the search engine. Uh, and here we have the metadata. So the people type. Um, and so you build your query like this. And, um, on the, um, Lower level, you have to configure the IP address of the console. And um, once it's done, you configure your search to use this call. And um, you're, uh, you're almost done. This means as soon as you're, going to, um, as you're, uh, you're going to submit your search, so it's going to make a call to the IP address you've configured with the filters you've configured, you will have results. Uh, the results are... Um, uh, on the JSON format, and so you have to well decode the the, the JSON, and uh, uh, for every result, you can uh, you can configure the the layout of your list and uh, every uh, item in the list. Looks like it's completed. So it was 85 before because it was an estimation, okay, of the record. So now we have as it's completed. So we. The real uh, number is 87. So if we searching now for uh, Nikita, we should have a full, uh, so filtering by show. Yes, okay, so now we have results with all the data we've pushed through the XML file, okay. So show, person, episode, and season related to, uh, yes, and we have the 87 here, okay. So everything comes from, from the box. that uh, you are able, so we will use Sevlog to build this live demo website. So we are able to control the output of all the results. This is a basic list with some CSS styling, but we can switch to any generic template that can display the results in Sevlog. So we have an example with the accordion template of Bootstrap at the bottom. That's the same mechanism. We will query the Google Search Appliance box. We will get back the result as XML. We explore them. And then the template, the template will manage, will manage the different things that we want to display. We've just put 
two different fields. The one in the heading is the title, and then we have the snippet inside. But maybe we can try to, yeah, I wish, okay, I've done the load more. So there is some load more and AJAX capabilities without refreshing the page, you're able to get more results. Okay, and maybe we will show you that we can just using a drag and drop add more fields to the output. Okay. Okay, uh, so just to explain quickly, we are in the back end of uh, Cblood, okay, in the configuration of the, um, of the search. Um, okay, we've, so Sebastian is adding by drag, dragging and dropping some fields in the, in the result list. So all the data you have, so each piece of data is a field in Cblood, okay? So you can see, well, it's not formatted, okay? So we have, we have the date, we have the country, we have the, um, the genre of, um, of the result, okay? Still the description. Uh, but of course, after you can uh, customize the layout to have a, a better uh, design, okay? But again, so just to remind you, it's the same query as, as uh, the, first, uh, the first list but with a different layout. And so you can uh, after choose to have maybe uh, some kind of carousel or slideshow uh, to display on the homepage uh, with uh, the latest uh, shows or latest episodes of, uh, um, that can be uh, grabbed in the database. Okay. Questions? Uh, you can do that through an override of, uh, of the templates, yes, because in fact you can uh, build your own layout through a PHP file and you have all the fields available in the PHP file and so you can check uh, on the type file. Uh, this is what we've done for this one because uh, depending on, on, the, on the type, we display uh, for a person the first day, uh, for, a, for a show uh, the number of seasons. So uh, you see, so person, so we have birthday, and uh, we only have so this information. And but for a show, we we have other uh, other data. So uh, as you can see, for an episode, we have season number, which is not in uh, in season. So uh, and so everything is tested is uh, tested with the the type of the record. And of course, after you can. In the search, you can uh, add some filters to only display a page with the sh with the shows. So this means you can uh, force the type to be uh, shows, and so you will only have show on the page. Same for season or person or uh, what you want, what you need to display to uh, to the user. Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah. Uh -huh. On this XML, are stored, stored in Google, the XML output, where are they stored? Where are they saved? Uh, they are saved in, a, in, in the GSA box, or in the database, uh, on the GSA uh, box, yes. So, server is just creating the, output, the XML file that will be saved in Google in this box. Uh, it could it could create the XML file. In this case, what we've done, we've created a PHP script. Okay, we've grabbed information from different uh, API, talking about uh, TV shows. Okay, we've created the XML file, and as you can, as you've seen with the form, you can push the XML file through uh, through an IP address with a post. And the query is executed by Google. The search queries. Yes. Yes, yeah. You post the query, the, all the, the fields in a, in a query to the GSA box. So the data in the query is data in yes. the GSA box? Yes. You are only caring about the layout, the display of those fields? Yes. Yeah, we have a JSON response, okay, with all the fields, all the data, and after you display the data if you want or not. Is the JSON response into the 
On the right, the dynamic, yes, it comes from Google. Yeah, it, uh, we have a list. So in the, in the, uh, yes, in the, in the results, we have, uh, in the header, the remainder of the query after we have the results. And at the end, we have all the dynamic fields. So you can use it. You can use them or, or not. So yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. yeah. We're going to show you the what we receive from Google after a query, and so it's not a JSON; it's a it's an XML. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, so this is the native UI that comes from Google Search Engine box. I will do the same query, so we will do it now. Okay, native UI. And if we want to see the XML output, there. So the um, all the param tags okay is what you've sent to the box for the query okay it's a reminder of what you searched um, all the rays uh, from this res tag you have the the number of records so we have uh, five results uh, for uh, every result we have a structure with the so we have the description here we have uh, the language but we don't use this one uh, we have um, yeah or because yeah we we don't have the meta tag so it's uh, yes thank you so you can see here all tags beginning with MT so meta tags with the name of the tag the name of the of the meta and the value With the number, so the C is, means count, and so you 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 know that for uh, if you click on you filter by this, so for people, so this person you will have one result. Yes. How does it integrate with Joomla in terms of if you only wanted certain types of information to be available to certain access levels? Uh, you can, you, you have different solutions. So either you, or you could do this. You could put, you could uh, set a data. You could set a data. Uh, to manage permissions, so to use Joomla access level to display content. The question so. was, um, if you wanted to use this system, but say you only wanted registered people to be able to search for people, um, and administrators could be able to search all fields. You can set a meta. Then how would you... How would you, you could use a meta uh, when you push the XML field. Uh, file, sorry, in the in the meta of the XML file, as you have in uh, Joomla, so you set uh, the access in a, which is stored in the DB, uh, in, uh, which is uh, uh, you use the same in your in the XML file. You create a meta which your name is uh, access, and you set a value. And uh, after you can display uh, a list where you set uh, where you can use this uh, value to filter uh, results. Yes, you already had the box and he was using the native UI so he wanted to have a shining bright uh, website so we're going to show you uh, 
the website from GE, which uses this technology. So uh, one thing, uh, like you, uh, like you imagine, so of course it's a technology uh, requires some big company with some big money, uh, but for uh, a lot of such uh, a company like this, it's a very big issue to be able to have one website which is able to search in any content everywhere in the company because this company will use a ton of different software uh, all these software will have a different database and so on so here is a solution for big company to centralize all the data from any tools and software used in the enterprise and to have one website which will allow you to search in all this data so it's to centralize and to and and to, uh, and to give to all employees the ability to search quickly any data, which is very often a big issue in uh, mm. enterprise. And so here it was about GSA, but in the first slide, so we have we this could work with uh, open source uh, solutions. So uh, we we've used GSA, but uh, we could. Yes, Elasticsearch will have done the same. So, okay. Here comes a big issue that is related to the other question. When you have so many data, you want to put some ACL and some access control with that. Yes. And you know you cannot just set a uh, meta type to say that it is running for this because it's a bit more complicated. You want classes of certain people to be able to access certain data. Mm -hmm. How can we deal, can we deal with that? Let's say the managers, the super managers, would want them both to access that resources. Uh, the accountants want to access that, that these resources and so on. Could we deal with that? You can uh, either uh, set a speci some specific searches on the Joomla website. Okay. Uh, you create your search with some specific uh, filters. You, uh, you set the search for a menu item, and so you can set the access on the menu item. Okay, so only specific people can have access to this menu item, so to this search, so to the results uh, brought by this search. This is one solution if you want to manage access on the Joomla website. And the search itself can be, uh, can, you can manage permissions on the search itself. Okay, not on the results, but on the search. So only a specific uh, profile can access this search. This could be a solution. Now, and we could also imagine to have the highest administrator to be able to edit the content within a form, and when it submits, we push everything back to JSA with a certain kind of level access. This could also have limitations. <laughs> it speak so much. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you edit something, you modify something. You don't only, you don't want only to update the CSA. You want only to update the real database, no? The system in your company. Is it? Am I wrong? And let's say that you have some salesman that have some text to promote product. Yeah. And admin modifies that text. Something that he likes, okay. And he updates the GSA. GSA or GSA? Yeah, GSA. Sorry. Don't we like to uh, want to update also the real database in our company where the real text is saved? You want to give both text, the one from the, the submissions and then the, the one edited by the. Yes, I suppose that they should be the same. The same copies. Well, there's no cop I think the question there's there is no copy. I mean, every document is stored in whatever document. Yes. You want to create a new record. Yeah, it's and just then, indexing. Then Google search indexes all these yes, data systems, and then after in the when you click on the in the result when you click on the link, you're redirected to if it's a document, you're redirected to the doc the real URL of the document. Documents came from other databases. That's fine, but, okay. but the whole point of GSA yeah. or or less search is to. But Index in real time. But local departments access the local database, not in GSA, I suppose. That doesn't matter. So if they're accessing that specific, you only, you only have one search portal. And that's always going to be GSA. Whatever that interface to it okay. would be different, but the, the API backend will always be the GSA. 
So even if it's a local department, it's going to go to GSA to get back. So all the departments, the company are accessing the GSA to store their the data. They are not using the databases at all. No. No, no. Uh, in in our case, uh, people post blogs, okay, on a on a specific tool on G, okay. We have a tool that grabs this information, push it to GSA, okay. You're on the website, you search for a post, you have some results, you have a link, you click on this link. You're not you you don't stay on the website. You're not in GSA. You're redirected to the specific tool where you have the post. GSA is just here to uh, index information and to uh, show you the best result for your search. Yeah, it doesn't store the Yes, I thought that the case of update because the actual question is what we are updating the data file and stuff in the GSA. So the question was shouldn't we they update all the data all over the company, no matter where they are sent, they are stored. Either in the GSA and the in the local databases. No, you'll no. You you do it on the local and you push after you you will push the new data the updated data to uh, to GSA. Yeah. That's clear. Yeah. No. G yeah. Yeah. GSA is not a document management system. It's just a super index of every month. So you always manage it in your separate Yes. Can you say the words that users users have in searching for? Yeah. Be uh, like a top ten of search. Uh, yeah, and you, or oh, maybe you were not on the, but so uh, the more you use the website, the more uh, the words uh, entered are. Uh, um, uh, so. uh, yes, in the console, yes, and and uh, you directly so from the for the users when you begin to type here, you have the autocomplete, okay. So this means this word comes first because it's it has been searched several times okay. on the website by different users, not only by you. Okay, it's not uh, it's not in uh, uh, the the browser doesn't remind uh, you search for Siemens. It's because many users have searched it, and in the console, I'm pretty sure you have uh, information about uh, the search keywords. Uh, uh, it's in search. Um, in reports, uh, there is reports. In fact, if you uh, reports, where well, you can ex export reports, uh, I'm pretty sure you have this, but uh, I don't remember what it is. I've seen this, pretty sure, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's somewhere. So, uh, question, how does it deal with uh, change management? So, like, can you search uh, for is it your record? Yeah, change yeah. 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 For the is, is, is this still useful? Because it's not asking the public. Uh, yeah. When when a change comes in, is it overwrite? Yeah. Yes. There is only one version of it. Yeah. Yes. There is no version. You mean there is a new field in, in the in the in your local extent or tool? Well, you have to update the XML file that you push to GSA yeah, to uh, to add this field. Mm, no, you know, no, no, because you have to. So it's really manual. So you have to add it in the XML file you push to GSA, and when it it comes back from GSA, well, you have to configure um, uh, GSA uh, if you want to have the new field in the in your dynamic navigation, okay? And after, of course, you have to define a new field in Sablot to uh, manage to manage this uh, this new field and display it where you want, so either in the result or in the in the, the in the navigation. Okay, here it's a configuration of the of the dynamic navigation uh, for this live demo. Okay, and you you could add here uh, as many as you want.
Yes, we're here.